Hey everyone, Earl here with Cutter Stabilizers. Today we're going to tell you the story about this big guy. So we kind of got to take it back to before the season actually started. So we had four different shooters on our properties this year in Nebraska. The first one was on the farm. He was a massive 10 point and uh, he was super consistent in the early season coming in hitting the cameras almost every day. So my buddy Matt was in there, hunted him hard, never, you never saw him, never had a chance. But uh, as September came to a close, October started to creep in, and that corn came down, that deer freaking disappeared. And to this day, we still have not gotten a picture of him. So I don't know if he got shot, if he moved to another property, or what happened to that deer. But long story short, he was nowhere to be found. Um, we also had... On that same property, another nice 10 point, that we have multiple pictures of those two bucks fighting. So they were kind of the two dominant bucks in that area. Again, that other 10 point, he was gone as well. So unfortunately, we kind of cut our losses and moved on to another property, which we had what we called the Big 8. And this guy was, we had one picture of this deer all season. So. That picture was from like October 27th, so the day before I was out there hunting, this deer walked through. Now October 27th, that's getting right into the pre-rut. These bucks are starting to roam and travel and look for does. So I kind of assumed that this deer was just passing through. He wasn't a resident deer. However, that eight point, the big eight, was very consistent on camera. We got him a bunch. I had several different encounters with him. And um, basically, that was my target deer, that big eight. So, season, the first hunt of the season comes. It is October 28th. It's a cold front. These deer are freaking moving. They're chasing does. I have that big eight at about 20 yards for about a minute and a half. Unfortunately, that was my first hanging hunt with a saddle. And I put myself in a spot where... I didn't have many good shooting lanes, and of course, he stops in one of the places that I don't have a shot. So, going forward from that hunt, the cold front ends, the snow stops, and everything kind of peters out. There's still some good deer movement, but nothing like that first day. Man, I saw a lot of deer on that first morning. I thought, this is going to be one and done. I'm going to shoot a deer on my first sit of the season, first trip out. <laughs> that was not the case. So, <clears throat> moving on into November, peak rut time, you know, so I'm out there November 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, and relatively slow, I don't see, don't see any of the shooter bucks, and um, I'm still not to the point where I want to shoot does or anything like that, and this year I had made up my mind that I was going to shoot one of those four bucks or nothing at all, and I was okay with that. You know, so that that week comes and goes. Peak rut week is <clears throat> it's fairly warm out. So we're talking, you know, high 50s, low 60s. And um, it was just, it was a tough week for sure. And it was disappointing. So I come back out. Uh, Thanksgiving. So I'm hunting the 23rd through the 25th. Back out here in Nebraska. We're on this little. So on that Thanksgiving trip, I was fortunate enough to have two encounters with the Big 8. This first one when he was chasing a doe, and obviously I didn't have a shot because he was on the other side of the creek bottom and just too far out of range. Man, I grunted at this buck, I snort wheezed, I rattled, he just was not interested. He was just staying glued to that doe and um, <clears throat> wasn't giving me the time of day. Second time, it was during that snowstorm. And he was out chasing does again in the field, so there was finally some rut activity. And this is this is the day before Thanksgiving, so these deer are just rutting late. So as the season's dragging on, you know, November comes and goes. We're getting into December. I come out December seventh, eighth, and 9th. Sit for three three days uh, in 
I hunted an evening and then the 8th and 9th there was probably a total of four hours that I was not in the stand aside from sleeping at night. So pretty much two full day sits. Did not see a single deer. Just kind of think about the season, think about all the effort that I put in and just enjoy my last afternoon out here. And at that point, you know, I'm I'm dejected, you know, I'm I'm defeated. You know, it's it's that time of the year, we're in the late season now, and man, I thought that you know, I'm I'm wasting my time out here. This is tough. So, come home, pack up all my stuff, wash all my laundry, put everything away for the year. And it gets to gets to the point where I feel like I'm giving up, which we never want to do. You know, that's something that I've always prided myself on with with cutter stabilizers, with anything I do in my life is never give up. So it was kind of funny, you know, during that time that I was back, I ended up getting this tattoo on my wrist that says NFQ. It stands for never effing quit. And after I got that, it kind of just kind of just clicked for me, you know? So one last trip. Give it all I got. Let's freaking do this. As you can tell, I couldn't stay away. I had to come back out. Well, we had a pretty action-packed morning. <clears throat> I probably saw like doe come in and she was at like 18, 19 yards right as the shot broke. She took a step and she was quartering away really hard and uh, <clears throat> it looked like I hit her, hit her back, like in the leg. Does come in, I have one stop at 18 yards, hard quartering away. She's maybe a couple degrees away from facing straight away. So I don't have a lot of margin for error. And um, tuck that pin behind her, right in front of her hind quarter. So super hard quartering away. And shot goes off. I see my arrow hit her in the in the freaking leg. I am I'm bummed at this point, you know. So get down to look for blood. It's like 9:30. And um, no, no blood, not a single drop of blood. From where I shot her to the property boundary is about 250 yards. Walk that, following tracks in the snow, not a single freaking drop of blood. So we have access for retrieval, but not for hunting on the neighbor's property. So I hop the fence, about 30 yards over the fence, I find my arrow. And there's about that much penetration on that arrow and it looks like muscle, which obviously, you know, I hit her in the, I hit her in the ass. There's, there's muscle there. So, find the arrow, start following the tracks again. I go another 300 yards down to the creek bottom to the northwest. And all of that time, there is no blood. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So at this point, it's 10 o'clock. I've tracked this deer for about 500 yards, and um, there's absolutely no sign of any blood. So I turn around, come back, grab my stuff, leave my bow on the ground, climb the tree to, to pick the rest of my stuff up out of the tree, and no sooner than I get up to the top of my platform that I see a couple does coming in. And they end up coming in, smelling my bow on the ground, smelling my climbing sticks, and they hang out for about five minutes at the base of my tree. <sighs> what can you do? So they come and go, and uh, I didn't spook them, so that was good, but uh, Obviously no shots with my bow being on the ground and the deer being on the ground with my bow. So, head out, go back, get some lunch, get back in the tree at around 1.30. About 10 minutes before last light, I see a deer coming in down the trail that runs right down the middle of the creek bottom. And uh, this uh, deer turns out to be a little forky. He stops, stops smells a, a scrape, and works his way in to about five yards underneath me. Looks up at me, kind of bounces off a few yards and then uh, turns and goes back the way he came. So at this point it's it's close to, to being past legal shooting light. I see another deer coming, runs through the, the CRP field and then drops down into the bottom, stops at that same scrape. So 
in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is just that, that stupid Forky again coming back. So I do have my bow in my hand. I have that going for me. But uh, this deer gets in to about 50 yards, and I realize this is not that Forky. This is a big deer. So in my mind, it's this is the big eight. This is the big eight that I've been chasing. I'm finally getting my opportunity, December 29th, right at last light. So you can kind of see that trail runs up through the bottom. <clears throat> I saw that buck come across from the field over here, drop down, walk that trail. He got to this tree and then turned to the left and started going up the hill. <clears throat> Right when his head went behind that vertical trunk, I drew my bow. He stopped right by that cedar, 13 yards. Put the pin on him, he's quartering away. Release that shot and I see that arrow go in about three or four ribs back from his shoulder. So in my head, I'm conflicted, right? I lost a deer this morning. So my confidence is fairly low. But at the same time, I see that arrow where it went in. I think, man, that's a good shot. It's in a good place. That's a dead deer. I'm freaking out at this point. I just shot the big eight. Oh my God. Oh my God, that happened so fast. I just shot the big eight at 13 yards. Oh my gosh. When the deer was running away, he kind of made a loop up the hill, then cut back through the river bottom and went up, came out on the uh, CRP field on the other side. That's kind of where I lost sight of him. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to go over to where I last saw him and see if I can uh, pick up some blood or some tracks. So I go over there and the rest is history. lifetime and I'm super happy and it just goes to show that some determination being a little bit stubborn and being at the right place at the right time goes a long way this is the deer of a lifetime I hope I can shoot another deer this big but to be honest with you if I don't I'll be one happy bow hunter well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little recollection of my season and Thank you for supporting our products, and I hope you guys all found some success as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hope to see you out in the woods.